Hi there, Hermano here again. Today I'm going to install Arch Linux on my laptop with a special configuration, and that is I'm not going to create a swap partition this time, but rather a swap file. So I'm going to create basically just two partitions, a EFI partition, because this is a UEFI system, and a root partition, and then a swap file. So let's see how it's done. I downloaded first the ISO from the Arch Linux website, going to downloads, selecting a mirror, clicking on a mirror and then downloading the ISO. I burned down the ISO on my USB stick and I booted from there. And I logged into my laptop now with SSH so that you can see the terminal with bigger fonts. So let's get started. Now, I booted up and I didn't have internet. So if you are on a laptop or on a desktop with Wi-Fi, you will have to type in now Wi-Fi dash menu. And when you hit enter, you will be presented with a list of networks. You can select one enter your password and then you will be connected to the internet. If you have a cable, you'll be not to worry about that. You will have already an IP there. So now if I type in IP space A, as you can see, I have an IP there ending with 43. So I'm good to go. So I clean up the terminal by hitting control L. And the first thing I'm going to do is to synchronize the time with the internet. So I'll type in time, date, CTL, set dash NTP, space true and hit enter there you go now i'll type in lsblk and as you can see my hard drive is already partitioned in three so we have an efi partition 512 megabytes there is a swap partition there for 32 gigabytes and the rest of the disk which is the root partition for 433 gigabytes so i'm going to delete these partitions because i want to format the hard disk from scratch so i'll type in fdisk slash dev slash NVMe 0N1. This is the name of the disk. It's an SSD. And I'll hit enter. And then I'll type in D for delete. Partition number three, yes. So I'll hit enter for delete. Again, type D and hit enter. Delete partition number two, enter. And again, D, enter. Partition one has been deleted. Now I have to write the changes to the disk. So I'll type in W and hit enter. Now I'll clean up the terminal and again, I'll type in LS VLK. And as you can see, my NVMe hard drive is now ready to be partitioned. So let's do this by typing in again, fdisk slash dev slash NVMe 0N1. You will have to replace this with the disk you have. It might be SDA or SDB or anything that you have in the list of your drives here. And then hit enter. So first thing I'm gonna create a GPT label. So I'll type in G and hit enter. Now I create the first partition, so I'll type in N for new, accept the default partition number one. First sector, I accept the default. And I wanna create the FI partition for 512 megabytes, so I'll type in plus 512, capital M, and hit enter. And I want to remove the signature, which is already there, so I'll type in Y and hit enter. You might see or not see this one. Then I create the second partition, so I'll type in N for new. Accept the default partition number two. First sector, I accept the default. And as for the last sector, I accept the default as well because I want to take the remainder of the disk, so I'll hit enter. And yes, I removed the signature because it was already containing one, and hit enter. And now I'll type in W and hit enter to write the changes to the disk. Now I'll clean up the terminal and I'll type in LSP, okay. And you can see we have NVMe P1 and P2, partition one and two, so the FI partition and the home partition. So now we need to format this partition, so let's begin to format the EFI partition. So we'll type in MKFS, FAT, so make file system, FAT, dash capital F32, and then the partition name, so in my case, slash dev, slash NVMe0N1, P1, and hit enter. And we'll format also the second partition. So we'll type in MKFS. This time I'm going to create an XT4 file system. So EXT4. And the partition name is slash dev slash NVMe0N1P2. And I'm going to hit enter. And there you go. Now I'll clean up the terminal. Now we formatted the partition and now we need to mount them. So let's first mount the root partition, which is 
the p2 partition so we'll type in mount slash partition name so dev slash nvme 0 and 1 p2 and we are going to mount this to the mount directory because this is where the system is going to be installed and then i'll hit enter now we want to mount the efi partition into the efi directory but the efi directory is not yet created so we'll have to create that first so we'll type in mkdir for make directory and we'll create it under the mount directory because that's where our installation is and I'll create the EFI directory and hit enter. And now we can mount the first partition to the EFI directory by typing in mount the partition name dev slash nvme 0 and one p1 and we're going to mount it on the mount slash EFI directory and hit enter. Now, if you are typing again lsbk, you'll see the p1 directory is under EFI and the p2 directory is under our root directory. So now we are ready to install the base system. So we'll type in packstrap and we'll install it in the mount directory. And the packages we are going to install are base, Linux, Linux firmware. And I'm going to install also editor. So I'm going to install nano. And when I'm ready, I'll just hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to install everything here and I'll be back when it's done. There you go, the base system is installed, so I clean up the terminal by hitting Ctrl L. And now we need to generate the fstab file with our mount points. So we'll do this by typing in gen fstab dash capital U. That's in the mount directory and we'll append this to the mount etsy fstab and hit enter. Now, if we output the content on fstab, we'll see what's in there. So let's do this by typing cat slash mount slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter. And as you can see, we have our home partition type xt4 and our EFI partition is also there. So I'll clean up the terminal by hitting control L. Now I'll move into the installation and leave the installer by typing in arch dash root space slash mount because this is in the mount directory then i'll hit enter and as you can see the prompt now change we are now in the installation and not anymore in the arch installer there's a few things we need to take care of here first thing we'll just adjust the time zone by typing in ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash europe slash Zurich. This is my case. You might have to replace Europe and Zurich with your data. And we're going to link this to the Etsy local time and hit enter. Now we are going to synchronize the hardware clock with the system clock. So we'll type in HW clock space dash dash sys to HC system to hardware clock basically and hit enter. And there you go. Now we need to edit the local file, so we'll type in nano slash etsy slash local dot gen and hit enter. And we'll scroll down here until we find our local. In my case, I'm looking for English US, which should be here, the one which UTF-8. So I'll just uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag and then hit control O and enter to save the file and control x to exit the editor now we need to generate the locale and we can type in locale dash gen and hit enter there you go now we need to edit the locale.com file so we'll pin nano etsy locale.conf and hit enter and we'll type in here the string lang equal english underscore us dot utf-8 and then control o and enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now we need to create the host name so we'll type in nano etsy host name and i'll name my machine arch and control o enter to save the file control x to exit the editor now we need to edit also the hosts file so we'll type in nano etsy hosts and hit enter 
and scroll down to the empty space and type in these strings 127.0.0.1 tab localhost next line colon colon one tab tab localhost again and the last line 127.0.1.1 the host name which we selected before so arch in my case dot local domain and then tab and then host name again again in my case arch you will have to replace this accordingly and then again control o and enter to save the file and control x to exit the editor now we haven't created a swap file yet so let's do this we'll do this by typing in fallocate dash l and then the size of the swap file in my case i want to select a four gigabyte size so i'll type in four gb and i'll call the file slash swap file and hit enter now i'll need to change the permissions on this file so that we can put it after in the fstar file so i'll type in chmod for changing permissions and i give permission 600 basically to be read and then the swap file name so slash swap file and hit enter now we need to make the swap so we'll type in make swap slash swap file and hit enter and now we need to activate the swap by typing in swap on space slash swap file and hit enter. Now we need to put the swap in the fstab file, so we need to edit that shortly. We type in nano slash etsy slash fstab. Scroll down to the empty space and we'll enter these lines. Dash swap file, space none, space swap space defaults, space zero, space zero. Basically, we are saying that we don't want the swap, of course, to be checked at boot, unlike the root partition where we have a one there, which means the file system is going to be checked at every boot. Then we'll hit control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now, let's clean up the terminal by hitting control L and I'll create a password for this root user. So I'll type in pass WD and hit enter and create the password and now we need to install some packages so we'll type in pacman dash capital s so the first one is grab our bootloader then we have efi boot mgr for the efi boot manager we need this for the installation of grab and then some networking tools so we have network manager we have network dash manager dash applet we have wireless underscore tools we have wpa underscore supplicant we have dialog we have also os dash prober and then we have m tools we have dos fs tools and then two development packages we have base dash devil and linux dash headers we're going to need them anywhere later so i rather install them now and once you're done you just hit enter and hit enter to accept the defaults and hit enter to proceed with the installation so it's going to take a moment to install all the packages here and i'll be back when it's done so the packages i've installed and now we need to install grub but before we do that let me type in lsblk again because as you remember, we mounted the EFI partition under the EFI directory, and this is where we want to install grub. So we'll install grub by typing in grub dash install space dash dash target equal x86 underscore 64 dash EFI space dash dash EFI dash directory equal slash EFI and space dash dash boot loader dash id equal grub and when you're ready you hit enter no error reported so now we need to create the configuration file for grub so we'll do this by typing in grub dash mk config we make configuration dash o and that's going to be under slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and hit enter and there you go
So now I'll exit the installation and go back to the installer by typing exit. And now I will unmount all the partitions by typing in U mount space dash A and hit enter. We have some errors here. Target is busy, which is fine. Now I'm going to type in reboot and hit enter. And I'm going to see if my laptop will boot in into Grub. And if it does, I will just hit enter to start the system. And I'll see you back in the terminal in a moment. So the installation was successful. I could see the Grub bootloader. I hope you did too. And I just entered now the installation with the root user. And so the first thing we need to do now is to actually activate internet. And we'll do this by typing in system CTL start network manager with capital N and capital M and hit enter. If you have an internet cable, you will have an IP. If you have Wi-Fi, you will have to enter now NMTUI and hit enter. You will be asked to edit a connection or activate a connection. So you will scroll down to activate connection and hit enter. Here you can select your Wi-Fi, hit enter, enter your password, and you'll be connected to the internet. So after that, you'll just click quit. And now we need to enable network manager so that the next time is going to be automatically started. So we'll do this by typing in system, CTL, enable network manager. Again, with capital N and capital M and then hit enter. There you go. So if we type in now IP space A, as you can see, we have an IP in my case on the wireless connection, which ends in 3.5. So I clean up the terminal. There is still one step I want to do. It's to add a new user. So I'll do this by typing in user add space dash M space dash capital G and then wheel. This is for the wheel group. It has to do with the sudo. We'll do this a little later. And then the name of the user. So in my case, Hermano and hit enter. Now I want to give a password to Hermano. So I'll type in pass WD Hermano and hit enter and type the new password. Now let's give Hermano pseudo powers. So to do that, we'll type in editor equal nano. And the file we want to edit is vysudo. So vysudo and hit enter. And we'll scroll down until we find here the wheel group. And we have to be careful because there are two of them. The one we need is actually the first one where it says wheel all equal all, not the one which says no password. Now we need to uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag. And then Control O and Enter to save the file, and Control X to exit the editor. Now we can run one package update and see if everything is up to date by typing in pacman dash capital S Y Y U and hit Enter. And there you go. There is nothing to do, so we are good to go. Now from this point, I would install the display server like Xorg or Wayland, and then I'll install probably a display manager and the desktop environment of your choice. And this is exactly what I'm going to do in the next video, which I will begin working on as soon as I finish this one. But for this video, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. Subscriptions really help us out, guys. And if there's anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.